Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a hair tutorial. As I said in one of my previous videos, I am going to start doing more hair tutorials and beauty tutorials. So that is what we're doing today. I have extensions. They're real hair, so they curl just like real hair. I got them back in because I just want my natural hair to be longer and I wanted to have long hair in the meantime. So my natural hair is about, so this is my natural hair here. So you can kind of see how long it is about there. So this adds a lot more length to that. So today we are doing beach waves. I'm gonna show you how to curl your hair with a curling iron. This is especially good for long hair because it's really hard to curl long hair for a lot of people because the traditional way of curling is really hard to do on long hair. And by the traditional way of curling, I mean this, where you start at the very bottom, like here, and then you roll all the way up. That is how a lot of people used to curl their hair. Now the curling iron's not on yet, so it's not gonna do anything. And you can still curl your hair that way. It's just gonna be a little bit bouncier and just different looking. The way I'm showing you is a very specific way to get a very beautiful wavy beach wave in your hair, like kind of textured and fun and just super cute. So that's how it's going to be different from the traditional way of curling your hair. And it's hard to do that for a lot of people with long hair because then it's just so thick and tight in that curling iron and you it just doesn't work very well when you have this hair length. A lot of people with hair that's longer than here sometimes give up on curling their hair with a curling iron that has a clamp because it's just easier for them to use a wand. But this technique is really fun and it looks different than a wand curl. And it also, I feel, works a little bit better on long hair. I still curl my hair with a wand sometimes, but I would say that I like the results from this more. But if I want to get a little bit of a different result, I'll still curl my hair with a wand because it's just a cute look. So I'm gonna get my curling iron heating up here. Now I'm gonna put my product in. So I'm actually using the Extensionist Thermique by Kerastas. And I normally use this on wet hair, but I am just gonna use about that much and I'm using it on dry hair today. Now I'm just going to lightly work that through the ends, up into the top. And the reason I'm putting this in is because it is a reparative leave-in conditioner. And I'm gonna add a little bit more. It also has a heat protectant in it, but I'm actually gonna use a different heat protectant on top of it, just because I'm not putting a ton of this in and I'm mostly using it on my ends. You can also do this curl on shorter hair lengths and that looks really pretty too. Now I just sprayed into my hair this heat protectant. This is the Orbe Invisible Defense. The bottle's so shiny that I don't know if the camera will really focus on it. It's a universal protection spray. It's really great for styling your hair when it's dry because using sprays on dry hair it gets through the hair a little bit easier and then your hair's not wet when you're curling it. That's why I didn't put a lot of the cream in. I don't want my hair to be damp when I'm putting an iron on it. So that's kind of the deal with that. And I'm gonna use a little bit of this. This is also an Orbe product. This is the Volumista. This is also meant for wet hair, but I like to use a little bit of it dry because I just feel like it really helps my hair just look a little bit like thicker. But you get the best results when you blow dry it in. I'm actually gonna put a little bit on my roots too. So I feel like you can even see the volume from that using it dry. And I already ran a brush through my hair, but I'm going to brush it one more time to just make sure all that product is distributed. Lastly, I am gonna add a little bit of dry shampoo. And I did put dry shampoo on yesterday, but I'm putting more in today. I like a lot of volume and I will just layer dry shampoo if I want more volume and if there's parts of my hair that are bugging me. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of it in the back here and that's mainly because I have a cowlick back there. And I feel like dry shampoo in combination with back combing helps hide it. 
The dry shampoo I'm using is one of my favorites. It's by Bumble and Bumble. This is the Preta powder, and it's a dry shampoo powder, so it is not a spray at all and you just lightly puff it. So I'll kind of show you because I want to put it around my hairline because that gets really oily because of my makeup and just different like moisturizers and skincare and stuff. So you just lightly puff it. I like sprays too. I use both, but this I particularly like just because I feel like it gives me more grit and volume than a spray does. I mean, look at this side versus this side. All I did was put dry shampoo in it. So it's pretty amazing stuff. I sell it in my salon. And I always preach to using professional product, especially shampoo and conditioner. So I'm really big on Bumble and Bumble, Shuamora, and Kerastase. I really like Orbe too, but I mostly use Orbe for styling and Kerastase and Shuamora are my favorite for shampoo and conditioner. I'm gonna go through and just kind of rub it in a little bit. All right, so I'm ready to start curling now. Um, and my ends feel dry. You just wanna make sure that the product isn't like soaking your hair before you go in and put heat on there. So I feel good about that. And then this feels like that's been heating up long enough too. Now when you have a curling iron, it's kind of hard to determine what heat setting you want it to be on. This one's particularly hard because there are no numbers or dials on this con air. And this is just like a grocery store curling iron. There are nicer hot tools you can get. It just depends on what you're wanting. I feel like the best hot tools are those with a heat setting you can see very clearly. So this one doesn't have that. In general, you don't want it to be on the highest heat setting. Unless your hair is really just hard to curl or it's very stubborn and thick and coarse. Like if you're trying to go with the highest heat setting, it's usually not the best. Like you usually can get away with doing lower than that. I feel like most um, hot tools go to like 400 and I usually stay between 320 and 350 depending on what I'm doing. For my hair, I usually use 350 and then I'll use 320 if I don't really want as much of like, if I want more of like a wavy effect, if I don't really want it to like curl as tight. We're gonna do the bang pieces first. And these pieces are gonna go away from my face, just because they're right next to my face. And I'm just gonna like heat up the base. So that just means kind of heating up where I'm starting. And then I'm gonna clamp there. And I'm going to be unclamping and rolling. Just like that. So this is why it's a lot easier on longer hair to do it this way because you're not rolling from the bottom up, you're rolling from the top down. And then you're gonna let go of that and untwist it and then just keep going. That's another reason it's like a lot easier to do it this way because you're pulling some out and then going down. And I'm gonna leave these little ends out of it because that's gonna make it look a little bit messier. Then once I'm done, I'm going to roll all the way back up. Oh, shoot. Just got unclamped there for a second. Just like that. And then I accidentally got the end of this curl a little bit when it got like unclamped, so I'm just gonna straighten that out a little bit. So it should look something like that. And then you're gonna leave it alone. You're gonna go to your next section. And this one I'm gonna do towards the face. Now you could do these all the same direction if you want. You could go like all the way from the face. Um, it's just gonna look a little less messy and a little bit more cohesive which is also a really beautiful look. I'm just trying to go for more of like the messy beach wave right now. So if I keep them in different directions, that's just gonna aid in it looking messier. Your hair is also finer at the ends and that's true with extensions too. So with those finer ends, you don't really wanna put like more damage on them than necessary anyway. And also they have a harder time staying in your curling iron, the finer it is, because then it's thinner and it can slide out easier on this like little pocket here. 
and you'll see when it's all done how it like really comes together but I don't want to mess with the curls yet because I want them to set in the heat and that just helps them stay in shape and then the next section I'm going to be going away from the face and I'm just going to be doing that all over my head going to create a very beautiful curled but also like wavy effortless messy look and when I'm putting my hand on the hair like this I'm checking the heat so I want to make sure that the hair is getting warm before I unroll like that The longer you leave it on, the tighter curl you're going to get. All right, so I'm probably just going to montage this next part and just continue doing my hair. I'm going to be kind of bouncing back and forth on the different sides of my head. I usually like to get the front on both sides done first because then that's going to be sitting with the curl for the longest amount of time before I break it up with like a brush or my fingers and I'll show you that at the end. So I've got the front kind of area around my face done, but before I go to the back, I'm actually going to back comb this section. My cowlick is right back here, so this is me trying to hide the cowlick and the tapes. And you can, I could probably do this after I style it. I've done that before too, but um, I think it might be easier if I do it before I curl these pieces, so I'm just going to do it now. And I'm going to hairspray that back combing too. This hairspray is the Sheer Lacquer. It's by Shuamora. It's a microfine finishing spray. So it just holds things in place. So I'm not using it on everything yet because I still want to break up the curls. And if it's a finishing spray, it's going to have a stronger hold. So it's not going to be as easy for me to break up those curls. So I am just using it on like the back combing sections. And I might do more back combing and adjust it like once I'm done, but that looks good enough for now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish curling.
Okay, the curls are finished and I've just been letting them set. So I just let them set long enough for them to not feel hot anymore. Now first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in. I just got a little sample of it here so I don't have the full bottle. It's the Elixir Team Oil. It's my favorite oil ever. It's one of my favorite products in general. I'm just gonna put a little bit in my hands. You don't want too much because you're using it on dry hair. And I'm just doing this to eliminate frizz. And I'm not breaking up the curls. I am simply just placing the oil over them and dragging it down with my fingers just like this. I'm not using like a clawing motion, it's very like gentle. I do want it to look textured, so I'm gonna be adding some texture spray after, but I don't want it to be frizzy. Then I'm gonna go ahead and break up the curls. So I like to use a wide tooth comb. I have no idea where mine went, so I'm just using the little end of this comb here. White tooth is gonna give you that like really perfect medium of like it's broken up but it still has a lot of like curl to it. So that's what like the wide tooth does. And then if you use a brush, you'll get like a lot softer of like a wave. I'm gonna do this piece a little bit more. So I've got some shorter bangs here, so sometimes I gotta kind of focus on them a little differently than the rest of my hair. And I think I'm growing them out, so they're just gonna be annoying for a while. Now that I've done that, I've like broken up the curls, they're looking really pretty. I'm gonna go in my root and just kind of reactivate that dry shampoo. And the only reason I didn't put any dry shampoo here is just because I felt like I could still feel it from yesterday. And it looks like it's still getting volume even though I didn't put more in. So, so now you've got this really pretty wave and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some texture spray. And that's just gonna kind of break it up and just give it some fun movement. This is the Orbe Dry Texture Spray. And I don't need a ton. This is probably my favorite product of all time, to be honest. This and the oil, oh my gosh, is the best. got it looking the way I want it, then I'm gonna go ahead and use that hairspray all over. And we're done. Just gonna back up so you can see a little bit more. This is what the ends look like. It's just a really fun way of curling your hair and getting it like nice and messy and wavy very like beachy and fun. Yeah, and it's just a really cute, cute look. So, yeah, I'm liking it. And this is what it looks like with all my hair forward. Hope you learned something from that video and that it was fun to watch and that you got some good hair tips to use. I will hopefully be posting more of these tutorials in the near future. And I'll see you next time. Bye. And then I'm going to call you.